I don't know about you, but the most favorite part of that song for me is when they all start standing up. Makes me want to stand up, right? Makes me want to stand up because of what that song represents. It represents us. We, the people of the United States, expresses to us the, the, the power of what it means to be free people. It expresses the, the concept that we can rally behind a, the cause of freedom. It expresses the fact that, that we can have these liberties, that we the people, that we the people. Hi, my name is Ian Renfro. Glad to have you with us today. We've been talking about in this series about the first paragraph of the Constitution. I find that so many people have never, ever read the Constitution. They don't even know what it talks about. They're not even really sure what it's about. But I wanted to start with the, you know, with the with the first paragraph, just the first paragraph, because the first paragraph is the place where the, the whole idea begins to move forward, where the whole idea of freedom stands up. It stands up for us to understand what's going on, right? We the people, not we the government, not we the elected representatives, not we this party, not we that party, not we the United Nations, not we the, the WHO, not, no, we the people. This country is made up of people who have believed in the concept and idea of freedom of liberty, that we have a right to live as free people with minimal intrusion by the government. At least that's what I believe. Now, I know there's people in our country that that have gone off and, and you know, got smarter than everybody else and went off and said, oh, no, we, we, we need to, a government that tells us when to, to breathe and, and, and when to put our pants on or when to take our pants off or, or, or when we can drive a car and when we can't drive a car and, and when we can work and when we can't work and, and what we should do and what we shouldn't do as far as a job or a career and, and, and that, that, that they know best that it, in some far off distant place that those people smarter than all the rest of us together have decided, well, that's how it should be. That's how it should be. The fallacy behind that whole idea, of course, is there's not one place on the planet that that's worked for the people. Oh, it works for the elite. It works for those people who bought in, who, who managed to get control of everybody, who enslave everybody, who go out and, and imprison the opposition or kill the opposition or tax the opposition out of existence. Oh, it works great in those places. But there's no freedom. There's no freedom there. So we, the people of these United States, of the, of the United States, it takes unity for us to do this. We can't do it alone. We can't do it by ourselves. But together, brought together in unity, which the next part talks about, in order to form a more perfect union. I know everybody... Everybody throws rocks at that part because of the word perfect. But the idea then was, was an experiment. Can we do this? Can we bring people together and, and in a mature and honest way and, and make an agreement together on a few things so that we can form this nation? 13 colonies with 13 cons of representation and 13 ideas of, of what it should all come about to be from all different walks of life came together and said, we can agree on some things. One is we the people. Two was we can come together. We can bring together a union, a unity to what we want to be as a people who are free, All right?
But then it goes on to say, in order to establish justice. Establish justice, right? That is to, to live as a nation of laws. Laws that are common for all and good for all people inside. In the beginning, they had no idea what that looked like. They had come out of a system and generations of systems and from different countries of the world, and they had no idea of how do you form a just society. It took a while. It's still taking a while. We hadn't figured it out yet. The tragedy is we keep stacking stuff on top of stuff, on top of stuff, on top of stuff, so much that that Justice and the rule of law loses its way. But the idea that we could establish a country that would be run by a set of laws that would provide the opportunity for people to live in a just society. Now, we've got a lot of things going on in our world right now, especially inside our country, where, where people think there's this rampant injustice. But when you look at the facts, when you break it all down, you find that it's not true. Somebody's made it up. Somebody's created a false narrative. Oh, they'll tell you, oh, no, you just don't know. Well, if, if you look at the facts and not somebody's rhetoric, you'll find that most people in the United States believe in justice. Most people in the United States are law-abiding. Most people in the United States understand that to be able to live free, you have to live under these laws, under the body of laws. They understand that. Otherwise, as we, as we see a, a group of people in our United States that they want laws for themselves. In other words, they want their cake and they want you not to have any cake but they expect you to buy the cake, pay for the cake, support the cake because, because, because they want it that way. There's no justice in that because it's run by people who don't have your best interests at heart. Our founding father said, we have to establish a way for the people to have justice, a just system, a just set of laws. So they begin to pin those. They begin to write them into a document that would become the Constitution. And then they realized they needed to add a Bill of Rights for people, to state some things for people. And over the 244 years that this document has existed, we have, it's been pulled on and tugged and debated and, and, and put into courts for interpretation and, and, and put out to the people for ratifications. And we, we've made some adjustments along the way because... We didn't have it right, all right. We didn't understand everything in the beginning, but we, we continue to move toward a way to help us be a nation of justice. And then, and then the founding fathers wrote, in order to ensure domestic tranquility, everybody, next to freedom, everybody wants peace. No one loves turmoil. Only people who have something wrong with them, either mentally deranged or emotionally deranged or, or, or have a, a spirit of, uh, de, uh, of oppression in them or depression in them, want life to be a turmoil. Life to be constantly in a turmoil that, that causes people to be able to even be able to even be at peace ar around them to walk on pins and needles, to feel like everything is, is, something to, is, is something to cause a problem for somebody else. See, one of the things that we live in right now is that, that movement over there that doesn't believe in freedom for all and only for a few. It doesn't believe in justice for all, but only for a few also believe that peace shouldn't be had by people. 
That is, if we can create conflict over and over, we can, we can cause people to be at odds with themselves all the time. We find that, that when we talk about the United States part, is we're Americans first. Not this brand of American and not that brand of American, but Americans. But, but people want to separate that into, you know, different, different tribes of kind of people. Oh, you're this brand of American and you're that brand of American. And over here, you're this brand of American. And then they, they, they want to they separate it economically. Oh, you're this class. No, you're this class. This class. And when that wasn't enough, they, they went back and they divided all the classes up so they could say, well, you're in that class, but you're only this level in that class. And then you're, you know, you're in this class. And so they begin to create turmoil in our life every day. They begin to give people titles. They begin to call. They begin to classify people in a lot of different kinds of ways. What in order to do what? Oh, it's all done in the name of being able to better understand the people. But when you look at it, when you look at the fruits of that, it's all about creating division. Because the idea that exists over there in that other camp is that if you keep dividing and keep dividing and keep dividing, you eventually divide everybody out. Where even people in their own household become divided. in order to ensure domestic tranquility, peace here in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our community, in our state, in our nation. We have gone through num numerous turmoils here in our nation. Some just recent where people have sought to establish themselves as their own domain inside these United States. be interesting how that all turns out for them. In order to provide a common defense that we are our brother's keeper. It is our responsibility to defend each other. It is our responsibility to, to rally around against all enemies, domestic and foreign, that would seek to destroy our freedom our union of coming together, our, the tranquility of being able to live in peace. Yesterday, we talked about the formation of our country to promote a general welfare. The idea that we as Americans believe that everybody can prosper. Everybody can have a dream. Everybody has a chance at that. Everybody has to, can go for the, quote, the golden ring. Everybody. Now, some people say, well, no, we don't believe that because we create barriers to that. But who created those barriers? Those people over there. Those people who want to divide us, classify us, restrict us. See, the, the, the concept of general welfare really comes down to personal responsibility. As you have to want it. Nobody else can want it for you. Nobody else can give it to you. You don't inherit it. It comes because you want it. And you want it for other people as much. To promote general welfare. And then we come to the days. We, the people of the United States, in order to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity, our prosperity, our, 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 our kids, our generation after generation, we have just determined that we must, to be free people, form this rule of government. That we must establish ourselves so we pledge that we will pursue life, liberty, and happiness. That it is a givenness to us as human beings. 
And it, because we are a, have agreed and pledged together that we, the people, will pursue that. You see, this blessing of liberty and to our children and our children's children and our children's children for generations is not something that can be granted to us by the government. It's not something that, that we can make a law to just that it will just exist because. No, it would exist in we, the people. See, the blessing of liberty it is just something on a piece of paper if it's not in we, the people. For we, the people, must determine that liberty is in us and lives through us and lives beyond us. Because it is something we value. It is something that we hold dear. It is something not that we would die for, but that we already died for. We've already determined. We've already determined that, that if necessary, we will defend liberty, life, and the pursuit of happiness with our very life. We've already made that decision because we believe it. Because we believe it. Hey, thanks for being with me today. I appreciate you being here. If this is if this helps you and maybe gives some other people some hope and direction of what's all going on today in our world, especially here in these United States, what's really happening is a is that there is an enemy that is seeking to devour us as the people, to divide us, to separate us to confuse us, to rob us. From the pursuit of freedom, the living of freedom, the having of freedom. If this helpful, would you share it? Would you share it? Tomorrow, July the 4th, 2020, we will celebrate the 244th year of the independence of the United States. We declared it. Wrote it down and proclaimed to the world we will be a free people. A United States. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the five pillars of liberty built on this uh, on a foundation that cannot be moved. Come back and see me again as we count down to freedom.